Sante san. Uh, good afternoon. As you uh, as you can see, we have come here to Masinga today. We are doing a security preparedness assessment and risk mitigation because um, the last one and a half months we have witnessed uh, a lot of precipitation in our country. The weather people have also warned us that the precipitation is going to continue uh, throughout December into January and uh, the experts here uh, who are uh, responsible for our generation plants at the Seven Fox dams have also told us that the levels at which the dams are filling requires to make contingency measures uh, so that uh, in the likely event that the El Nino continues and in the likely event that um, the dams fill, uh, the spillover is likely to lead to flooding and we therefore need to be uh, alert so that uh, the populations that are living contiguous to the, the dams are not affected by the flooding. Uh, as you're aware, we have uh, five dams uh, within this uh, generation uh, ecosystem and Masinga, where we are, is the largest. Uh, but there are some other smaller dams which uh, cascade downwards, uh, down the river, uh, Kamburu, Gitaru, Kindaruma and Kambere. And therefore, uh, once this dam fills. The spillover cascades to the smaller dams and, uh, and therefore we expect that the action, the impact points where the flooding is likely to affect the settlements is at Kambere. And therefore from here, 
we're going to be in Kambere because we want to speak to the members of the public there uh, so that we sensitize them on um, the need for us to be alert and to prepare them for the eventuality, the likely eventuality of uh, evacuating them for their own safety. I can confirm that, uh, as you're aware, the El Nino coordination uh, uh, process is ongoing and every day at 3 p.m. we are giving daily updates from Nairobi on the state of um, uh, the country in terms of mitigating the effects of the El Nino rains. The last few days we have not had uh, much rains, but the experts say in another seven days to ten days the rains might come back, uh, even in uh, greater torrents, and therefore we are using this window, this uh, window of a few days that uh, has been uh, given to us by the meteorological department to prepare the country, to prepare our people, to make sure that we don't have um, a loss of life and property. Therefore, we are monitoring the situation here on a daily basis. The security teams um, at the regional level, county level, sub-county level, downwards to the location levels have been activated, the multi-agency uh, teams to make sure that uh, first we remain alert, two we report incidents, uh, number three we prepare affected communities uh, in the event that an alert is issued for evacuation. Therefore we are taking this as a national security matter we already have lost uh, quite a number of people, as you're aware, 142, which is a big number across the country. We would like not to lose an extra life if we can prevent. And the rules are simple. One, please avoid risking your life uh, uh, by crossing flooded rivers. Uh, do not cross moving uh, uh, rivers that are beyond a certain point where you cannot resist um, uh, the waters. And the danger of trying to cross flooded waters or flooded rivers is that the, the floods and the, the waters also come with, 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 other, with rocks, with logs, with other things that can complicate and, and, and knock you down. So it's not just the water, but also other things that the water carries underneath, including logs of wood and also rocks, which can be very, very dangerous. We have also seen motorists who are risking their lives and the lives of their passengers uh, by insisting on crossing uh, uh, rivers and, 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 and flooded places. When you encounter floods, just be still and wait and call for help. We have deployed a lot of equipment across the country to rescue, to search and rescue for people who may be marooned or caught up in the floods. And uh, please obey the instructions of uh, the security managers at your local level. Uh, when they warn you uh, not to proceed with your journey, please comply. It is in your interest. But let me say, uh, uh, because we've had a, a few incidents, I think in Tana River uh, and, and, and uh, uh, some other incidents in Kwale, where we have had members of the public defying warnings from um, our security agencies. And the results have been catastrophic. Uh, those people have ended up losing their lives. So we are going to be very firm in uh, enforcing safety measures. And therefore, when, for example, the experts here give us the alert that uh, the spillover is expected, we will expect to evacuate by force every affected person within a certain limited uh, uh, period of time and will not uh, risk uh, negotiating with people who want to hang around and get harmed in the process. I therefore want to confirm to the country that we are doing whatever is possible to make sure that we don't lose more lives. Uh, number two, we are doing whatever is possible to support those who are affected by the El Nino floods. Uh, as, as we speak, we have deployed enough air assets in terms of aircrafts, uh, 
and we are working with other partners including the Red Cross and uh, humanitarian organizations and many parts of the country including today are receiving food items, non-food items, pharmaceuticals in terms of drugs and also non-pharmaceutical items. We are distributing them to as many counties as possible, uh, those that have been affected. And we have placed uh, food in strategic places across the country and therefore even if the rains escalate we don't expect to have a lot of logistical challenges because we have transported that food out of Nairobi uh, to places where it is required. We have had a few incidents where uh, 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 supply routes have been uh, blocked, but we have unblocked. The last one was Mwinge Garissa. I think uh, we unblocked it yesterday. And I want to commend the Ministry of Transport for a great job they are doing, all the agencies. We have also unblocked uh, uh, Garissa, Mudagashe, all the way to Wajia. And we are hoping also to get uh, 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 Garissa, Kotulo, Mandera uh, up and running. I think up to by this morning it's also up and running. So I think we are, we, are, we are okay generally. Mine is just to request that we cooperate and don't panic and, and wait from where you are until you are assisted. Our teams are out there and we are working together as one government at the national level. We are coordinating this under the National Disaster Operations Center uh, where the daily briefings are happening. But all the agencies in the front line are represented there, including Kenjen. They have a representative there. We have the Kenya Defense Forces, ourselves, the Ministry of Interior, the National Police Service is there, the Ministry of Transport is there, the minister, Ministry responsible for assaults, and all the other agencies, energy, we are all there as one government and I'm here today as a testament that we are taking this seriously and we don't want to lose a single more life. Uh, already the dead, the people we have lost are, are too many and majority of them, over 70, 80 percent have uh, lost their lives unfortunately by perhaps risking their lives. We of course condole with the families who have lost their loved ones. And, and we really hope that our sympathies will reach out to them. But we are also calling on the rest of us who are alive to be careful and wait a little longer. You don't have to attend every market day. You can skip two or three weeks uh, and, and avoid going to the market and you'll be fine from January. You don't have to proceed with every journey. If you can postpone a journey, please go ahead and postpone it. Uh, because. Uh, Sometimes it's not worth uh, the risk we have seen. Some people have been actually swept when swimming across flooded rivers for no good reason. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, that is what has brought us here. Uh, we will go uh, down to Kambere. We'll also have a public baraza with the public, members of the public that are likely to be affected there. And we want to say that we will stand with every Kenyan who is affected by this, uh, uh, this El Nino uh, challenge. Uh, it has brought some positive effects, like the filling of these dams will, uh, will help us uh, generate more through the hydro option and uh, therefore it means we can stand down the expensive generators that sometimes we, we use to supplement our energy needs. But then there are the adverse effects, like the loss of life and, and the other things. So we are going to Kiambere, we'll have a public baraza there, and every day we will we'll be circulating alerts. Going forward, when the rain starts uh, coming back, especially in this uh, ecosystem of the Seven Fox Dams, we are going to be issuing, we will be asking for the phone numbers of all the people uh, that are affected, those that could be affected by uh, any spillover, and we'll be sending alerts directly to their telephone numbers. Other than the meetings that our national government administration officers will be doing, we'll be sending alerts directly to their phone numbers so that in case of evacuation, um, uh, nobody says that they didn't know. And finally, I, as I, I can confirm, the country has enough uh, preparedness, we have enough food, we have enough non-food items, we have enough drugs, we have enough mosquito nets, 
we have enough facilities to set up temporary camps and to keep our people safe with enough supplies until the rain subsides and therefore there is no cause of alarm. Telling us the water levels uh, where they are now, we are left with about six meters and that will require, you know, anything between 15 and 30 days, depending on the amount of precipitation uh, to fill. <clears throat> but you know, you never know. The rains may decide to come back in, in, in huge torrents and, and all of a sudden within a week, the, the six meters that are remaining are full. Or they may come in uh, small uh, bits and take another 30 days. So mine is to assure the country that we are monitoring this situation using scientific method, use, using physical inspection methods, using all methods that we can use to make sure that our people are not affected. So we have six meters left, and this is the primary dam. If this one spills over, the, the, the other dams in the caskets will ex automatically uh, spill over, the last one being uh, Kiambere, and therefore the, the point of impact is going to be the populations around Kiambere Dam and the populations down the river, downstreams in uh, Kitui and uh, Tarakanithi and Tana River counties. Right now we are anticipating about uh, 3,000 uh, people may be affected within Embu County. Um, another perhaps uh, 2,000 people in Tarakanithi County, that's the estimate. <clears throat> in Kitui County we expect approximately 25,000 people to be affected. And uh, in Garissa County it's likely to be much more than that because that's where the biggest impact is likely to be felt in Garissa County. So that's what has brought us here. It's good to see all of you. We wish you well. Allow us to proceed and uh, go to Kiambere. Santeni sana mungu wa Thank you. Kwa sababu ya kutathmini hali ya maziwa haya ama mabawa haya ambayo ni mabawa yetu ya ku uh, uh, ya, ya umeme uh, apa masinga na vile vile mabawa madogo ya gitaro kamburu kindaruma na kiambere tumearifiwa na wataalamu hapa ya kwamba katika siku zijazo kama siku kumi kukinyesha, kukinyesha siku kumi mfululizo kuendelea bawa hili linaweza jaa na bawa hili likijaa maji haya Yata, yataelekea yakifuata mkondo wa mto Tana mpaka bawa la mwisho bawa la mwisho la Kiambere na wale watu ambao wako chini ya, ya ama karibu na Kiambere vile vile na county na wale wengine ambao wako katika counties ambazo ziko chini ikiwemo Kitui, Taraka Nithi kwa hali ndogo lakini kwa hali kubwa county ya Garissa wanaweza adhiriwa kwa hivyo kazi yetu ni kuhakikisha kwamba wananchi hawaumizwi awa ama wapotezi maisha uh, kwa sababu ya maji kama mabawa haya yatajaa na tunaelekea hapo kuwapatia uh, ku, kuungana nao na ili tuwapatie ilani ya kwamba kama wataalamu watatueleza ya kwamba uh, mabawa haya yameanza kujaa itawalazimu sisi kuwatoa pale E, kama serikali kwa nguvu kuokoa maisha yao lakini vile vile kuhakikisha kwamba watakuwa salama tutawapatia mahali pa kwenda tutawapatia mahali pa kukaa tutawapatia chakula madawa na mahitaji mengine ambayo wanahitaji mpaka wakati mvua itapungua ndio waweze kurudi tunaendelea kuwahimiza watu wetu katika jamhuri ya Kenya tafadhali wasicheze na maji kwa sababu maji inaweza leta kifo ukiona maji uh, ya mvua na maji ambayo si ya kawaida ngojea mahali huko tafuta mahali salama u, u, alafu ulize msaada na sisi tuko na maofisa wa kutosha na tu, tunafanya kazi idara zote za serikali ikiwemo vikosi vyetu vya usalama vikosi vya ulinzi uh, vile vile vijana 
ile taasisi ya vijana wa taifa NYS na idara mbalimbali na wizara mbalimbali tunafanya kazi pamoja katika mashinani kuhakikisha kwamba tumesaidia wananchi mahali ambapo hatuwezi kufika kwa barabara tuko na ndege kutoka kwa uh, jeshi letu la ulinzi wa taifa na tunashirikiana pia na mashirika kama shirika la msalaba mwekundu na vile vile mashirika ya umoja wa mataifa kuhakikisha kwamba watu wetu wamepata uh, uh, usaidizi wakati huu mgumu uh, tuna chakula cha kutosha tuna madawa ya kutosha tuna vifaa vya kutosha vya kusaidia wananchi uh, kuhamia uh, uh, mahali uh, mahali kwingine kama mvua itaendelea na vile vile uh, tunaimiza wananchi wasiweke mzaha na wakati huo ukifika tutatumia njia zote kuokoa maisha ili tusije tukawa na watu zaidi ambao wamepotesha wamepoteza maisha yao maybe i should have said uh, in english before i, I wind up that um, the experts